Hey guys, Kevin here, Candy Banana Balls. How's everybody doing tonight? Got Loopy Sanchez here tonight with me. Uh, talk to you a little bit about breeding season since it has kicked off. Uh, give you a few tips, a few things that I've learned. Uh, if you have problems getting your males and females locking, stuff like that. Uh, first thing, I can't stress this enough. I don't know how many snakes you guys have. If you have a collection, make sure you've sexed your snakes. I don't know how many times I've talked to people. It's happened to myself before I knew how to do it. Um, you're pairing up, and you don't even have a male and a female. Uh, there's so much of that in this business. So much, um, you know, people selling females um, or selling males as females. Nobody checks them, you know. Popping is a, a little bit of an art. Um, you know, once you're good at it, I'm not good at it yet. Um, but if you miss, it's very easy to miss if you're not doing it right. You don't see the hemipenes and you assume you have a girl. And a lot of that happens. So what I'm saying is, you know, before you start wasting your time and you're pairing up and nothing's happening, um, you know, it doesn't always... You don't always have a fight when you put two males together. Um, typically, you're going to see uh, weird behavior like that that, you know, was going to tell you that you don't have a male and a female together, but not always. So make sure you're putting a male and a female together. Start there, obviously. Next tip is always put your male into the female's enclosure. Um, there's scents in there um, that's going to help your male... Uh, know that he's there to do business and uh, it's going to speed up the process. Don't put your females in with your males. Put your males in with your females. Uh, next, um, let's just say you've done all that and you're still having problems uh, getting locks. Well, that's where you can get into some other tips. Um, if you have more than one male, um, save some of your male sheds put them in a ziploc bag by themselves and then uh, put a male shed opposite of your male that you're putting in in the tub with the male and the female dampen it a little bit before you do and uh, that will help that's going to give your other male uh, a sense that there's another male in the area trying to be breed that female and he's going to want to get to her first so uh, that's going to help your male uh, get the job done next thing um, you could do and you should do um, is if there's anything in your female's tub um, what I'm saying is maybe don't clean it that week uh, let uh, some urates in there even if there's a, uh, a poop leave it in there um, all those carry the pheromones and the scents um, that's going to trigger this male to mate so leave your basically leave your females enclosure a little dirty um, to get your male kicked into uh, mating uh, another option for you is um, and it's a little bit more uh, I want to say desperate but a little bit more involved um, take if you have another male go ahead and pop that male and get a sperm plug and take that sperm plug on your female and put it right on her back that's going to, again, trigger your male to get the job done. He's going to want to, uh, you know, mate that female versus letting the other male in the area get to her. So uh, that's something that will work. And that's, uh, I've seen that work a lot of times when nothing else is working. Um, you know, you, you've, you've tried everything else and it just doesn't seem to happen. And then all of a sudden you put that and now your male is now going across her back and like, wait a minute. You know, there's another there's another male in the area I, I need to get this job done here so uh, that's an option for you uh, get that um, and that will definitely help uh, another thing is to watch the weather um, there is something to this and if you see some of the top breeders talking about it when weather systems come in typically like a, a rain cold front comes in uh, these animals seem to trigger into uh, mating. Uh, so let's say you got a rainstorm coming in, uh, put your males and females together, do all the other tricks that I told you, and then just dampen, um, get a little bit of a warm mist, 
um, a spray bottle with some warm water and spray everything down just a light mist both the snakes and and kind of uh, you know you're gonna duplicate you know a warm rain uh, do that to both snakes in the enclosure that's also gonna help trigger something so there's, there's a few things that you can do if you aren't having any luck just putting your males and females together and they're just kind of hanging out or spending time across from each other uh, there's no rhyme or reason to it some males and females just don't seem to jive or don't seem to uh, connect or be compatible uh, why that is I can't tell you I mean you know same probably with people maybe there's something there that you know, the, the female doesn't want any parts of or the male doesn't want any parts of and uh, they just don't seem to so uh, you know if you have a breeding program I would say have at least one male for every three to five females depending on how uh, you know, how much breeding you want to do uh, that way you know you can switch them up if you're not having any luck and again depending on what you're shooting for goal wise you know you're gonna have to have multiple males of a certain you know, if you're, you want to breed pides, um, you know, you're going to have to have one more male pied if, if that's what you want. Now, when I'm doing bananas, you know, I have a, a couple options. You know, I have banana pastel, I have this banana, I have uh, the super banana. So, I'm kind of a little more flexible when it comes to mixing mine up. You know, other than the super banana trying to get all bananas, uh, you know, I have options. You know, I'm not really going for anything. Now, my super banana is het pied, and I want I want to get into the pied project. So when I get a pied female, I'm hoping that they will, you know, obviously get along and uh, and mate. But when it comes to this, you know, I can put this banana in with say my enchi, and if I'm not having any luck, I can get my banana pastel and put in with my enchi. I can get my super banana and put in with my enchi. So you know what I mean? I'm still getting basically what I want. Uh, you know less maybe one one or two genes but uh, you know I have options there if you're shooting for certain things you know if you're working on clown or if you're working on something uh, you may only have one male that's getting you know gonna pair up and get you what you want if you put that male with that female constantly and you're not having any luck and you've tried all those tricks it can get a little frustrating um, you know if they're just not you know what I call compatible uh, yeah, you know, you've spent the money, you've spent the time raising them, feeding them, getting them to size, and now all of a sudden they're just, you know, not interested in each other. Uh, it can be a very frustrating situation, so remember that. You know, there's no guarantees in this. Uh, you're shooting for something, you got one, you know, one powerhouse male that you want to use, and all of a sudden, you know, there's a female or two that, you know, just he's not interested in or she's not interested in. You don't really have much choice other than to, you know, get another male and hope that that is the case, that, you know, that that they will uh, be compatible. So, uh, remember that. You know, there's a lot of ifs in this game. Um, it's not just as simple as putting two snakes together and you're going to have babies. Um, I spent, I got a late start on my project. Um, I didn't really have breeders until early spring um, I was kind of late in trying to get everything going so uh, I did end up with a clutch of eggs um, my banana pastel which was my oldest male at the time and my firefly female did get together ovulation and we had eggs um, but I had a few other pairings but nothing happened um, through the summer so you know, I'm hoping for a good breeding season now fall into winter and hopefully um, we'll have uh, more eggs than we did uh, this past year now I've had locks from some females that haven't locked before just in the past week or two which is a good sign um, I was really only getting locks from uh, I was getting locks from the big Bertha the big girl and one other um, now we're getting locks out of, I'm just trying to think, looking at the collection now, I think the only one that hasn't locked 
for me. Um, actually, we've got a lock, at least one lock with each female, which is, which is good. Um, I looked yesterday. I believe Bertha was ovulating and uh, caught the end, tail end of that yesterday. Um, she was really, really big in the lower half of the body. If you don't know what ovulation is, um, that's whenever the, the eggs are getting fertilized and they swell up. Um, almost looks like they ate a football. It's it's very, very pronounced. It's more than just, um, you know, like they've eaten a meal. It's, you notice it. Uh, it looks very pronounced. Like, why is, you know, why is my snake swelled up that big? And uh, she was, and even today, she was on the downside of it, but you could even still tell today. So, um, positive, you know, there that we have ovulation. So, we're going to be looking next for the prelay shed. Um, she'll do that, hopefully, um, within the next month. And then from there, about 30 days to egg. So, uh, if I'm not seeing things, uh, we have something going on with Bertha. She had locked with this male. And also the pastel. Uh, I couldn't get a lock that I witnessed um, from the super banana, which is what I was shooting for. You know, Big Bertha, I'm thinking, would probably, you know, give a good 8 to 12 egg clutch. And that would have been nice with a super banana to have all bananas out of her. So that would have been awesome. But uh, I did not witness a lock between those two. This one... Um, really looked like a lock it was close I, I can't say for sure but she definitely locked with the banana pastel that was for sure they stayed locked for for a little over a day um i caught these ones uh her and this guy uh, toward the end um so it, it appeared that they were locked um for about a half a day or so from what i caught um so that's a good sign um otherwise that's where we stand. Um, just wanted to give you guys a few tips on uh, getting some of these females to lock with your males. Uh, a few ideas, a few tricks, well have you, that uh, may help you in this breeding process. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, again, please like and subscribe. Um, hopefully the journey is going to kick up a notch. We'll have some, uh, some exciting stuff going on. Multiple females, hopefully with eggs. Um, I want to get our super banana as of yet. I have not really witnessed a lock. I witnessed it close with the one. Um, this one was a virgin until recently. And then he locked with uh, the ghost, the female ghost that I had raised up. Um, she came into weight uh, probably early spring. She was hitting around 1,500 grams or so in early spring. And these two, she, she hadn't locked with anybody. And these two finally locked about a week ago. Um, so that's good news. Um, so, yeah, we got uh, we got lots going on. Uh, please like, subscribe, come along with us. Like I said, I'm going to do a t-shirt giveaway, get that figured out. And uh, I got an ASF video uh, or two I want to get out to you guys as well. So uh, thanks again for watching. Enjoy your evening. And... Peace out. Have a great day, YouTube.